Hello, in this video we will understand about the chill blains. This is known as the pernio or perniosis. So this is the symptom on the skin which the arise due to the cold weather exposure and will lead to cause uh, the skin damage. So let's begin to understand. So it is formed after intermittent or a prolonged exposure to cold or damp air. The cold air uh, causes blood vessel near your skin's surface to tighten or constrict. So the vasoconstriction leading to hypoxia and this leading to hypoxia and inflammation will increase in these exposed areas uh, basically uh, in this exposed areas will suffer the uh, chill blains. So let's begin to understand with detail. So basically the pernu uh, develops because of genetic. So the genetic is very important some people have but some people not. So that is why the genetic uh, variability involved for the chill planes. So on the other hand the hormonal changes like the hypothyroidism and the underlying diseases such as the, uh, such as the connective tissue disorders or um, um, uh, a peripheral arteri arterial disease which that is also involving on the other hand the low blood pressure so this is the brain remember the cold stimulation the normally if the if we will discuss discuss about the normally physiology so this is the brain and higher brain cortex and this is the cerebellum but we will understand about the hypothalamus is here and the pituitary gland is involving from for the heat production and uh, conserve the metabolism so in this way, this is the adenohypophysis of the pituitary gland. We release the thyroid stimulating hormone. We will stimulate the thyroid gland for the uh, hyperthermia, uh, hyperthermia, not hypothermia. So the hypothermia is also involved for this function. So in this way, it produces, stimulates the thyroid gland to produce T3 and T4. This T3 and T4 will target to the several tissue to produce heat production. The heat will produce more. So in this way the heat conservation and production of heat will lead to prevent the chill blains. While in this way here is the hypothalamus and pituitary gland. The hypothalamus basically provides the non-shivering thermogenesis of shivering thermogenesis from the hypothalamus. So the cold exposure will stimulate the hypothalamus to the central nervous system and in this way the, this is the spinal cord. The spinal cord which that allow the uh, allow the nerves ag activation the adrenergic nerves will stimulate the adrenal gland from the central nervous system to, to the peripheral nervous system and adrenal gland stimulation through adrenergic nerves. So adrenergic nerves will uh, stimulate uh, to the adrenal gland. So this is the dorsal root of uh, ganglion and ventral root of ganglion. This is the adrenal gland contain cortex and medulla. After the stimulation of adrenal gland, the catecholamines mines will be increased into the blood circulatory system. Remember, when catecholamine mine is the uh, basically is the uh, vasoconstrictor or vasodilators on the basis of requirement, but in this time the cold weather is more we require the conservation of heat into the vital organ but the heat conservation uh, uh, is not important in the periphery of the skin non-vital part so the vasoconstriction will occur near the surface which that is not any problem uh, regard to the death so the hypoxia will occur when the vasoconstriction and in this way the smooth muscle here is the constriction due to the catecholamine, the epinephrine and norepinephrine. For smooth muscle of the blood vessel will constrict due to the calcium increase. So just remember for that things. So in this way this is a peripheral cell. Let's begin to understand what is the function of peripheral cell. So already I had uh, I have discussed about the hypoxia. In this way the uh, not too much oxygen. I will uh, diffuse so the 
anaerobic respiration will inhibit anaerobic respiration increase so the hypoxia will lead to apoptosis also and the imbalance of the uh, inter in, intracellular intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid uh, to swelling due to the excessive fluid will be entered into the cell as well as the imbalances due to the sodium and potassium imbalances due to the blood circulation incomplete or restriction so in this way inflammation will increase will recruit through a cytokines and chemokines to innate immune cells and in this way the inflammation will increase that is why the swelling will, will increase more so remember the uh, immune cell reside you know, on the inflammation side where the chill brain will occur so remember that things basically the fluid retention the edema is due to the chill brains due to the vasoconstriction for the preservation of heat into the vital organ so the symptom is the blisters burning sense and on the other hand the skin color change so okay, you can understand as well so basically remember that thing the imbalances of the sodium and potassium which that will lead to cause this uh, function showing in the diagram and here is you can see the picture so this is the skin color change the burning sensation and the blister formation so important thing is need to know that where the blood circulation will not so the aerobic respiration inhibit number one and number two thing is that the imbalances of sodium and potassium will lead to imbalance of the fluid intracellularly and extracellularly will lead to dysfunction of the cell lead to apoptosis as well as the inflammation so the diagnosis is a blood test the blood test to understand the sodium and potassium as well as other things and the skin biopsy and the for con confirmation of the uh, chill blains through blood test and the treatment is the oral medication the nifedipine vasodilators and topical medication topical medication and nitroglycerin the nitrol nitrol and nitrobin nitrobit So the risk factor if we will discuss the risk factor and how to prevent the chill brain that is important the smoking which that also lead to vasoconstriction in the periphery and the non active ex, uh, no, uh, non activeness it means the exercise decrease will lead to chill brain so the exercise is the remedy for the decrease of the chill brain problem and exposure to cold environment hypothyroidism is also involved pituitary axis dysfunction and thyroid cancer as well as pituitary tumor formation which that will lead to chill brain also but the genetic cause is the major remember that things so thanks for watching please make sure to subscribe like and share if you like this video